So far, we've learned that we can use the picking numbers strategy to solve for a variety of problems. You already know that you can use the picking numbers strategy if you're looking for the relationship between two numbers. In this lesson, we will work on using this strategy to find the ratio between two numbers. Let's start with looking at what a ratio is. A ratio is a way of mathematically expressing the relative sizes of two or more numbers to explain their relationship. On the SAT, you'll know that you're looking for a ratio and can pick numbers if you see any of the following. What is the ratio of x to z? What is x divided by z? What is x to z? x is what fraction of z? And what fraction of x is z? If you need to go over those ratios again, feel free to rewind. It might even help to write those down to get super familiar. Just remember, a ratio is written to show the relative size of two numbers. Because of that, we can assume each value to have a specific weight. Let's check out what this would look like on the SAT. Our example problem reads as follows. The ratio of r to s is 3 to 4. The ratio of s to t is 2 to 9. What is the ratio of r to t? The answer choices are a, 1 to 3, b, 1 to 6, c, 2 to 9, and d, 3 to 10. Let's underline the facts, circle the key words, and label the answer choices. So we're looking for the ratio of r to t. We have numbers in the answer choices rather than variables, but we can still pick numbers for this problem. Let's start with the first thing we're told, that the ratio of r to s is 3 to 4. Based on this, we can go easy on ourselves and say that r is equal to 3 and s is equal to 4. Of course, we can pick any multiples of 3 and 4, but let's stick with 3 and 4. Now, let's look at the next bit of information. The ratio of s to t is 2 to 9. If we set this up as an equation, we get that s over t is equal to 2 over 9. Since we set s equal to 4, let's plug that in here. That way, we get 4 over t equals 2 over 9. Great. Now that we have an equation and picked a single variable, we can solve for t. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but we're going to solve by cross-multiplying. Right now, our equation says 4 over t equals 2 over 9. If we cross-multiply over the equals sign, we get 4 times 9 is equal to 2 times t. Doing the multiplication, we get 36 equals 2t. Now, we can solve for t by dividing by 2 on both sides. We find that t equals 18. The question is asking for the ratio of r to t. Plugging in 3 for r and 18 for t, we see that our ratio is 3 to 18. Remember to always simplify the responses you get, unless for some reason your options are unsimplified. We can definitely simplify r to t by dividing both by the greatest common factor, which is 3. That leaves us with 3 over 3, which is 1, and 18 over 3, which is 6. So the ratio of r to t is equal to 1 to 6. Looking at our answer choices, we see that choice B is the right answer. Whenever you have a question that asks for the ratio between two unknowns, you can always pick numbers. Now let's look at an SAT problem that's a little bit harder. Let's make this one a pause and solve. Grab some paper and a pencil to solve the problem on your own, and then we'll go through it together. If the ratio of x to y is 2 to 7, which of the following equations must be true? Use all the strategies we've talked about and give it your best shot, okay? Ready, set, pause. And we're back. Did you find that to be more difficult? Let's work through this problem together and see if we get the same answer. We'll start by underlining the facts, circling the key terms, and labeling the answer choices. We have a ratio with a couple of variables in the question, so let's pick numbers for those variables. Based on the given ratio, we say that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 7. Now let's go to the answer choices and see which one must be true. In answer choice A, x minus y equals 5 becomes 2 minus 7 equals 5, which is not true. So answer choice A is wrong. In answer choice B, x times y equals 14 becomes 2 times 7 equals 14. That's true, but before we pick it, let's look at the other answer choices. Remember, with must-be-true problems, you want to try all of the answer choices. Plugging our numbers into answer choice C, we get 2 plus 7 equals 9, which is also true. Here's where it gets tricky. We can only pick one, 
but two of the answer choices work for the numbers we picked. Let's look at answer choice D, which also turns out to be true. We picked numbers and used them to cross off a wrong answer, but we still have three. We need to try again, this time with a new set of numbers. Instead of two and seven, let's pick another set of numbers that fits with our ratio. Our new numbers will need to be multiples of two and seven, so let's double them. The ratio will stay the same, but our new x value will be four and our new y value will be 14. Let's try answer choice B with our new numbers. We now have four times 14 equals 14. We don't even need to do the multiplication to know that one is wrong, cross off B. In answer choice C, we now have four plus 14 equals nine. That's completely wrong too, cross off C. In answer choice D, we have seven times four equals two times 14. A quick bit of multiplication shows us that 28 equals 28. So D is the right answer. Nice work. Remember, if you have a question that asks for the ratio between two variables, you can always pick numbers. And if the going gets tough, try picking more numbers. Keep practicing this by taking advantage of all the practice problems we have available for you throughout this course.